What is that? I got it. Are you giddy too? Yes, I am. Just because I had a moment where it's like, I don't know this. I was like, I have no idea what we're going to talk about today. I have There's no so much clue to talk about. What you're going to throw at me. There's so much to talk about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, I'm, I am. I don't know why I'm giddy. I'm really happy. Um, yeah. Uh, very in love with you. Oh. You look like a damn Easter egg. Thank you. You look like a damn Easter egg. Thank and you, I, and, thank and you. it is. Uh, it is tank tops and flip flops season. That's baby. why you're in yep. a good mood. It's been a long time since we've seen the taco meat. I gotta get it out, baby. You gotta show the <laughs> show the big daddy. Let him know what's up. You know these women have been waiting. <laughs> these women every episode they're like, I wonder if he's wearing a tank top. I wonder when if he's wearing a tank, tank top. Tank top coming back. You know, oh, I gotta put my pants back on. He's not wearing a tank top. You know. What? Oh my! What? It's a whole thing. It's a what? Whole thing. See, Adrian laughed. You know, um, you had me until right there, sir. I want to give it up, first of all. Uh, we always do it at the end this time. Uh, Aztec Chevrolet in Beeville. Ast, uh, uh, Uvalde Chevrolet in Uvalde, Texas. Yes. Sam's uh, Aztec, I'm sorry, Aztec uh, Ford in Goliath. So give them some love. Give them a reach out to those guys. Make it work. Um, gosh, uh, Brian buying a truck from those guys today. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Brian bought a truck. Mr. Brian bought a high, <gasps> bought a high country from those guys, and Ooh, I can't you know, wait to see it. Brian came home and was like, "Oh my God, the process was so easy. They were so friendly, and yeah. we just love those guys." Rebecca Creek, big things coming at Rebecca Creek, um, very very soon. We're very excited about it. Yes, uh, we appreciate them. Uh, they have a double a Spanish oak double barrel for those whiskey lovers. If you can get your hands on it, it will blow your mind. Mm-hmm. It is delicious. What is it about the Spanish oak? Oh my God, it's just so good. And, and we're going to have um, a podcast from Rebecca Creek and we're going to learn a little bit. Yeah. So let's not talk about it now. Okay. Old salt coffee, delicious. Uh, Grandma Doya was at the house and she was <laughs> oh my God, this coffee is so good. She goes, why is this coffee so good? Is it, is it the one from the, the podcast, mijo? I said, yeah, ma. I said, it's particularly good because I made it this morning, not Steve. Wow. You know, we're just trying to give love here. <laughs> Ralph Western wear, if you're not getting shirts from there, uh, you're pathetic. Oh my gosh, um, you know, so many people were commenting um, on the Guayavera that you wore in the when we filmed the special. Yee! And so I was like, that is Ral Western wear. That beautiful shirt is Ral Western wear. Okay, we are gonna, you know, we are gonna beg and we're gonna plead and we're gonna round up the troops and you know, I'm gonna ask that all the people that have loved and supported us to continue. I know we've asked a lot of you guys and you guys have really literally made our careers. Um, but we really need you guys to come full force. The special comes out. We can announce it. It is out on March 12th on Netflix. On Netflix. Get your, now here's the thing. A lot of people are going, Oh my gosh, we're going to have a Steve Trevino watch party. Yes. And we're going to invite all our friends over to watch it. And we love you spreading the news of who Steve is with all your friends if they don't know him already. <laughs> but we the problem that. is that Netflix counts every single click. Yes. So if you have 20 people at your house watching the special. And they're all watching it on the same screen. I only get one click. So if you get invited to a watch party. Play it on your phone, in your purse. Yes. Before you leave the house, <laughs> play it, it at your house it. and just let it roll. <laughs> and then do me a favor when you go to work, put it on repeat. Yes. Every click matters. Yes. Every tablet, every phone, every television, every device. But even right now, so that you don't forget, because I know we're all so excited and we're talking about it's coming out, but it's not going to, you know, you can't watch it till March 12th. What you can do is you can go to Netflix right now. They can search you, Steve Trevino, Simple Man, and it will pop up and there's a button right under, it'll play a little clip, which is awesome. You get to see a sneak peek of the special. And then there's a button that says, remind me. Click remind me please. so that you don't forget. Please, please, please. We're begging. Yes. We're begging. We're asking um, the team over here from Rick to Adrian, uh, the social media team. We got some really cool promos coming your way. Yes. Um, I am going to be on Good Morning America. Uh-huh. Yes, we're going to New York City. I'm so, you know, I love New York. I am so excited to be going back to New York. And the reason we're going back is because you're going to be on Good Morning America. That's freaking awesome. Yep. And then Good Morning NFL. Yes. And then we're going to LA. We're going to do Adam Carolla's podcast again. You're doing we're the gonna, LNK Morning Show. LNK Morning I've show. never met LNK. Can I tag along and yes, meet LNK for that one? Of course. And then we're doing um, a lot of promo, a lot of, lot of exciting stuff. I mean, I'm not getting as many opportunities as other people at my level. But that's okay. 
Well, I have you guys. We're going to work hard. We're yeah. going to, again, prove to the world that I belong here. Yeah. That I deserve to be Oh, here. my God. This special does it. This this special does it. It is so good from start to finish. I am, I'm, it's like a roller coaster. I'm really, I, you know, that, you know, I did watch. I got I to gotta tell you, I, I, you know, they have a little clip uh-huh. on Facebook. I mean, yes. on, on Netflix. Yes. If you Google Steve Trevino release date, Simple Man, Netflix has a link where, where you can say, remind me. Uh-huh. And they have a little clip. I'm going to say it now. Adrian, Rick, when we release that clip, it is going to go viral. It is going to go viral. It is the, I'm telling you right now. It's not even my favorite joke or clip in the special. Uh, it is going to go viral. I know it is. It is, it is, it is, it is it, it's geared up to do that. Rick wants to say something. I can hear him yes. in the background. Speak up, Rick. Uh, yeah, I keep clicking. Sorry. Uh, Steve, I know you hate watching yourself, but what do you think of the look it's and gorgeous. everything of it? That, it is... that clip that's on Netflix, Rick, that is probably the most of the special he has watched. Yes. It is, it is gorgeous. Um, I figured. I love my team. I, you know, Rick, you know, love you, buddy. Um, you know, I, I, I Adrian, Wait, I love you. Wait, up. Say that um, again. Sorry. A little bit louder for I, my um, mom to hear. I truly, you know, I've always had this dream to have this team that I can grow with, that we can be successful together. And it, and, it, and for a long time, I thought it's not going to happen. Right. I, I've been through managers, agents, I've been through social media teams. I've been through producers. I mean, where we just, and now I have the team that I just, I love. You know, I care so much about Adrian and his family. I care so much about Rick and his family and Lori and all the things that we're doing. You know, my new management, Joe, um, my new agents. I mean, it's just, I finally feel after 20 something years of doing this, that we have gone through it all. And I have now. I have this this team that we can go forward together. Because I, I don't. I didn't ever want it to be impersonal. Yeah. I never wanted it to be. You have never been a it's business. Not I'm not. I'm not that person. guy. Yeah. You know. No. And and even though I've broken up with Adrian in the past, I've always come back. Yeah. I've always come back to Adrian, and and I also want to thank um, Adrian for always taking us back. Yeah. You know. Um, I also think major that maybe there was moments where you're like, Hey motherfucker, you're coming back. <laughs> you're coming back. Right. Um, but, but I'm really proud of our team and I think Rick is too. And <clears throat> I think Adrian, you're feeling it right. That we really have something special here. Yeah. You know, um, and, and I just, yeah, go ahead. I'm going to jump in right there, Steve. Sorry to interrupt you. I got to give it up to Renee too. Like the jokes are funny and hilarious, but man, wait till you see, cause I don't know in that clip if they show the steady cam, which you have to understand, Steve, the steady camp can't go an hour. You can you right. have to pick and choose where that steady camp goes. And Renee, well, Renee too, I mean, it. you know, and, and I'm sorry, Rick, you are right. I didn't, I didn't mention my partner in crime here, Renee, Renee, you worked so hard on this thing. And I'm just so excited for the, for, for all of us as a team, yeah. you know, and, I want to make sure that everybody knows that I am so appreciative of of everything that has happened, the way it's happening, and whether this special does amazing things for us or it doesn't. I'm still proud of it. Oh, I am too. Team. I feel like it was such it was you know. such a gift for me. That, you know, uh, it was such a gift for me and for us. And I'm really like you said, regardless of what happens with this special, I'm really proud of of what we accomplished. And and me personally, and and maybe I shouldn't get into this on the podcast, but I will. Um, <clears throat> you know, <laughs> watching other comedians, and I will not name names. Yeah. Watching other comedians, all they constantly talk about is how much money they're spending, their private jets, their tour buses, their you know, expensive trips, their, you know, how much they spent on this or how much they spent on that. And how it, it, for me, I don't ever want to be that guy. And, 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 and I don't, I don't know how the general public can root for those guys. Baby, your tank top with a hole in it and well, your little I nipple mean, sticking out. You, know, you, um, will ne- you will never and, be that and, guy. <laughs> and I got to give it up. And I, and I will mention this name. 
I got to give it up to Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan is the richest of all of them. Yeah. And you never see clips of him bragging about his private jets or his houses or, or all the money that he's, that he's garnished or spent or, yeah. you know, and, and, and I look at Joe and I go, wow, man, like, you know, here's a guy that, that is literally has half a billion dollars, maybe more. Yeah. And he doesn't talk like that. Yeah. Right. So I, I've just, you know, I, I just hope that, that I always check myself, you know, um, that we always make sure that we're not, and I'm not that guy. Yeah. Ha- have you noticed that too, Rick, that trend? Oh, for sure. Yeah. Especially with social media. It's all about what do you, you know, have? And, and I just don't get, I don't get it. Right. Cause to me, the comedian is the ever man, every man. Right. Well, that's what I was going to say. The comedian is the voice, the comedian. And by the way, I know these guys, they didn't have shit. They didn't have anything. But it's the gift of like, it's the gift of being able to make people laugh, right? It's such a common human unifier. And the fact that you are so aware of the power that that possesses and what it can do and what it can accomplish. And you've used it to tell such relatable stories. I want to entertain. Yeah. That's what I want to do. I want to entertain. I want people to come to my show and go that hour and a half I spent watching Steve in his opening act was a break from life. Yeah. I laughed. I had a good time. It brought value to my life. That's what I want. Yeah. Right. The fact that I get paid to do it is still very mind blowing to me. Yeah. Uh, and I just, you know, I just don't want to be that guy. Yeah. You know, um, I also want to make sure that we always stick to our morals and our, our moral compass. And, you know, we don't take sponsorships from people that either we don't use or don't, you know, if somebody comes to me and says, Hey, you know, we want to give you a beer sponsorship and we're going to pay you X amount of dollars. I'm not a beer drinker. I I can't help you. Yeah. You know, keep your money. I, I don't, I don't drink beer. Yeah. You know, Rebecca Creek has been super kind and sweet, but I drink whiskey. I like whiskey. I like their whiskey. I like that they're from Texas. Yeah. I like the guys that own it. I know the owners, you know, and they're not, you know, um, giving me some huge endorsement. I like them. And we, you know, I just want to make sure that we always, as a group and as a team, that we always do things in a way that has integrity, you know, and I, and I feel like a lot of integrity gets lost, um, with, with success, you know, and it's scary. Yeah. You know, so. But I think uh, the team you have around you is important. I think so too. I mean, you know, I don't think, um, I also, I also value my team's opinions. You know, I don't walk in and go, Rick, you don't know what you're doing. I want to do this or, oh, Adrian, what, you know, are you out of your mind? You know, I mean, Adrian comes to me and says, hey, I really think we should do this. Well, this is your department, man. You're the expert. Yeah. You know, you come to me all the time and go, what do you think of this? I'm like, not my department. I trust the people around me to do those things. Yeah. You know, um, and that's why I'm so proud of of what we accomplished here with this Netflix special uh, coming out. So before it comes out, I just want to say that no matter what happens, I love and I'm proud of my team. I appreciate everybody that was involved. From the folks at the Tobin Center to the people that cleaned my green room when I left to my wife, the director, to Rick, the producer, to... Adrian and his team and all the things that Adrian has done um, for our success. I just want to say thank you. Now, if it absolutely goes nuts and I turn into a big fucking asshole, I expect all of you to kick me in the nuts. <laughs> Can I be first? <laughs> Adrian, raise your hand. He called it before you. Oh, he called it before you. Um, I, that's a good question for you, Rick. Have you ever like worked with a talent that wasn't huge and then they became huge and then you saw a huge change i think we both have actually uh pit and it's not that he turned into a jerk but remember like when you and i were with him on the street corner of miami no one was stopping him now you can't go anywhere without stopping him so the thing about him is 
He's just <coughs> way too anything. big to do anything. Yeah, I mean, when right we now. met Pitt, I mean, Pitt was. I remember when we met him, he bought his first expensive car. It was. Remember, he bought that BMW. Um, it was like a seven series. Yep. He was so proud of it. Yeah. You know, and man, we would, we would literally hang out on the corner. Nobody cared. You know, nobody was like, oh my God, Pitbull. But yes, he did. He changed. But what I'm saying is he changed. What I'm saying is are the, the people that change for the worst. Pitt actually changed for the better. Yeah. You know, Joe Trevino, my dad used to always say, you will find out who a true man is when they're rich and when they're drunk. <laughs> You will really find out who they are. Yeah. Right? If they are, when they get rich and they're still nice and kind and thoughtful, Mm -hmm. or when they get drunk, they're still nice, kind, and thoughtful, you'll know. Yeah. Right? But when they get drunk, are they, do they turn into a fucking asshole? And then once they get money, do they turn into an asshole? Yeah. Right? But Pitt never did. I mean, Pitt's always been um, sweet and gracious. and, And of course, we give him the luxury of, we lower our expectations when we're backstage with Pitt because we know how famous he is. We know how busy he is. What do you mean we lower our expectations? Well, we don't expect to sit there and chop it up with him backstage for an hour. Yeah. Right? But he always makes sure that he comes out, gives us a hug, and he'll spend you know, 10, 15 minutes before or after a show laughing with me or chatting it up with me. Yeah. And we all know that after the show, he's on his private jet and he's gone. Yeah. Right? But he's not telling everybody that. He's yeah. just pit, right? So, but what I mean is, have you dealt with that where, you know, Rick, you, you worked with somebody, they were super nice before they were famous and all of a sudden they don't even talk to you? I have a couple friends and I, because of your large social following, I'm not naming names because I have to work with some of these people. But uh, yeah, I, I've had that happen, and it's brutal, especially when you were friends first, and then they became famous. Yeah, well, and, and that's kind of the thing for me, right? I mean, I, I stood around the comedy store with a lot of these guys, right? Um, there's one in particular, and I'm not going to name any names, but he was one of those guys that I thought would never be that guy mm-hmm. and became that guy. You know, when we were coming up and when we were, you know, standing, literally begging for stage time and not getting the stage time, you know, and getting passed over, he was a very sweet, humble dude that you just never thought would become that guy. Yeah. And then now I see him and I'm like, who are you? I I, I, st- I know you. I stood and had hours and hours of conversation with you. And now you're this guy that just is wearing outlandishly expensive clothes and has this outlandishly huge ego. It's just weird to me. Yeah. Distorted perspective. It's just weird. And it's uncomfortable for me because I'm like, I still want to believe that they're not that guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But then I see him all over socials and I'm like, who the fuck is that guy? And it's, it's, it's. Well, I don't think you can pass judgment by what you see on socials. Mm. No, mm. no, you're see, you're only seeing your that's only one of the bits and pieces and glimpses. Rick, that was one of my on pitches socials. for a, the promo for Simple Man, right? Where you know I I get like a Ferrari and then we act like paparazzi's running up on me and they're like, "Hey, aren't you supposed to be the Simple Man?" And I'm like, "Hey, man!" Like, and I'm jumping in my Ferrari. Leave me alone! You know. I'm, I'm, <laughs> Peeling off, I'm wearing double sunglasses, a, a Gucci scarf, and I'm like, "What are you talking about? You weren't supposed to catch me here, you know." And then we find out that Renee's an actress, and that it's all made up, and that you're not even my wife, right? <laughs> like that was one of my pitches that that I'm really this really shitty human being, and that we, you know we catch me being shitty. Uh, but, I don't know. It would have been too much production, but I thought that could be like. It has absolutely nothing to do with Simple Man. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean, though. That, yeah. No, the idea it has everything to do with Simple Man is that that this Simple Man persona is bullshit. Yeah. Right. That that it's all made up. That it's all fucking. Uh, you know, I came from money. My parents are rich. You know, like. Yeah. What do you think? You know, anything is funny. I thought it was. Guy. Huh. Guy. Yeah, yeah, right. Um, <laughs> I, I thought it'd just be a funny, you know, promo or yeah. whatever, you know. Um, but anyway, what a weekend we had. Um, 
it was so cool because literally the episode before the weekend was talking about how stinking proud I am of Garrett. Uh Uh-huh. And, oh, my gosh, what a baseball weekend we had. I have my gripes and my frustrations, but um, we're just going to talk about the blessings. Yeah. You know, Garrett, God dog it, man, that kid. We're down um, four to... Four to two. Yeah, if we're down four to two, it's the last inning. There's two kids on base. Yeah. And here comes Garrett to hit. And Garrett hits a home run. Yeah. And knocks in the three runs to win the game. And it was just, you know, as a dad, such a proud moment for me. I shared it on my regular Facebook page, uh, the video from Game Changer. Yeah. And again, you know, afterwards, Garrett... Garrett had this, you know, little grin on his face like, did you see that? It's you the know? cutest thing to see all these little seven, eight-year-olds eight-year-old running man. out of the dugout and, like, jumping up and down and hugging each other. And it's like really cute. tackling Garrett. Like, yeah. it was – but again, afterwards, he said, Dad, it's worth it. Yeah. He goes, Dad, it, for that feeling, the hard work is worth it. And, dude, it was just a wonderful father-son moment for me and and you know to see him have that moment um out there because of and and for him to to for him to put it together it's the hard work yeah that may help me do this yeah and him going to me going I want to work harder I was just so glad you were be able you were able to be there because it's rare that you were there for a tournament like I said because they're on the weekend you know I had this weekend blocked off for helicopters for heroes Long story short, um, it turned out that I wasn't able to do Helicopters for Heroes, but the blessing of it was that I got to be at Garrett's baseball tournament. Yeah. Um, there was a little role reversal for me and you. Yes. Um, I had the kids, and you were on the road <laughs> uh, out there being Driving a star. back and forth to San Antonio. Being a star. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, my mom, uh, my godmother, Mother Nanji came. Um, and we're a huge help and, yes. and really appreciate them. Um, but it was definitely a role reversal where it was me, my mom, cause usually it's you and your parents Yeah. when I'm on the road doing all of this. Uh-huh. And I gotta be honest with you, walk in the park. I don't know what we're complaining about. <laughs> I don't know what the issue is. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm still wondering what the problem is. I get home. The laundry stacked up. The house is, is a disaster. No. Renee's bitching and mad at me. It's a whole thing. And Renee gets home. You know what I would the like The house is clean. Do. My parents. The clothes are washed. Um, the, I, as a matter of fact, I laughed. Because your mom because and Mother Nancy did it all. Not No, they didn't do it all. You did not I, fold clothes. You did not do dishes. You did not wash laundry. Okay, pump the brakes. Your parents are with you. I still come home. None of that's done. My parents are not with me all the time. Hey, there and, and are a lot I, of weekends Adrian, that you were on the Adrian, road. Adrian, get this. Uh-uh. Not only <laughs> that, not only that, she gets home and dinner is served. She got home, homemade street tacos, cooked, ready to go, little bowls with <laughs> options. Do you know what? Can I do Diced it? onions, Actually. cilantro, three different kinds of cheeses. The limes are cut. The food's already cooked. She just got there and was like, she sat down like, no. my, like my dad <laughs> in olden days. And she was like, feed me, bitch. And I was like, Thank yes, you, ma'am. Love. I did not plate, say that. No. Plate, hey, guy, but, plate, tortillas, hot off the comal, ready to go. She literally walked in the house. And then she goes, uh, go get the stuff out of my trunk. And I was like, well, okay, but I'm cooking. Two minutes later, speaking wife. So uh, my trunk's open. Three minutes later, speaking wife. So the ice chest is just gonna stay in my trunk, <laughs> bro. I'm in, how can I? I'm in my, I'm in my, um, uh, what's it called? Apron. Your, I'm in my apron. apron. Shut your mouth. Okay. You're my, so hair's <laughs> my hair's in curlers. My hair's in curlers. You're in your robe. Right? You're I'm about barefoot. That. You're about that. I'm barefoot. <laughs> and she's walking in there. I'm trying to make my my hardworking wife a nice meal when she gets home. And hey, chop chop, motherfucker. No. Go get my shit out of the trunk too. <laughs> Are, are you working on your next hour? Is no, I'm just, just saying. 
because half of this is bullshit. I'm just saying that I don't know how that feels. I don't know how what it feels like to get off the road, sit down, and a home cooked meal is waiting for me. By the way, you the kids, have no. the kids bathed. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Okay, <laughs> Garrett. Garrett was reading a book when she got home. Okay, all right. Garrett's reading a book. All right. Delilah was knitting. Delilah was sitting there knitting a sweater. Yes. <laughs> And then Renee walks in and she's like, go get my shit out of the trunk. I'm like, God dang. Wow. I wish I wish I came home like that off the No, road. you know what I would like for you to try? I would like for you to do a weekend without me and without your mom. Still do it. Let's do it. When are you ready? I I would like I would like you to give that a go. And then we'll have a conversation. Dude, my knees were so bad. My knees were hurting because I was cleaning the floor. <laughs> With no, a sponge, with a sponge, <laughs> at the corners. You know the corners. Yeah, you know the little corners. You were cleaning I sponged, the baseboards. I was getting the baseboards. You were the little corners. The baseboards. Clean. You walked in, smelled like fabuloso. I mean, the place spotless, spotless. And then my son goes, "Hello, mom." He said, "Hello, mom." And then my daughter was like, "Hello, mother," and she was knitting a sweater for her. Taken care of. Done. Done. Okay, after that. Thank, thank you. I'm very grateful. Well, good. The street tacos were delicious. And actually, I feel like I taught you well because I, when I did come home, everything was in pretty containers. You'd like pulled out the tray with all the different bowls and the different toppings. Like, I taught you well, baby. Your presentation was on point. Guy. <laughs> Guy. One day. One day I would like to come home like that. One day. Not every day. You came home to meatloaf last Just. night. That you bought at H-E-B and put in the oven. Okay. Is that homemade meatloaf? But it was meatloaf. New. New. You came home to warm meatloaf? Um, all joking aside, um, it, it really was a blessing. That it was. I, that I got to be home and that, it was. that Renee got to go do her thing. And then mom and madrina said that they went to go see you and that it was a huge success. Yeah, it was awesome. Tell me about it. Tell us all about it. I mean, this, the spring show is huge. And um, Egypt Sharad was the other speaker, and people love her. Do you know who she is? I could care less. But <clears throat> are they wearing Egypt Sharad shirts? <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, no. Big they thank were you not. to all the people that wore. Yes. they wore Captain Evil shirts. Some women to go see my wife in Captain Evil shirts. It was awesome, and like people traveled to come see me, and I had a lot of friendly, loving, encouraging faces out in the audience. That is, it, was, that is, it was awesome. It was really cool. That is absolutely beautiful. But but because Egypt draws such a different crowd, that's a completely different audience than people who know you and I. Um, there were lots of people who had no idea who I was, no idea who you were. So did you get more cool. followers? Um, you know what? I don't know. I think I should have had like some sort of signage or something. Well, to you know, pass Adrian's dropping so the ball. Fall, you know, Adrian but... should have had the damn QR codes and, um, you know, but it was but, good. But yeah, no, no, but it was great. It was great. I got, I did a news segment you, on Kins 5. Oh, I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, do you feel like you're getting better? Yes. The demos are my sweet spot. And you, well, what's such a huge relief is, is I... I go through a lot of trouble to like put together these presentations to figure out what's budget friendly, to figure out what is like doable, you know, that people can actually do. I don't want to come do some big old demo on something no one is ever going to try and attempt, you know. Um, but I also want it to be like fresh ideas, something they haven't seen before. And that's hard, though. Yeah. That is hard. I mean, I, you know, there's times that me and you are like, oh, you should do this. This is a great idea. And then we look it up and somebody's done it. Right. Because that, the internet, yeah. I mean, there's just so many ideas out there. And realistically, you know. what can I demo when I'm not in my own home kitchen? Right. When right. I've just yep. got like a you gotta table haul all the shit out there. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's oh, the that's another thing. <laughs> Usually when she goes to tournaments by herself, she gets the wagon. I didn't get the wagon. Because I had the wagon she with took all the wagon. my stuff. And so the, now I've the, got the, chairs, the Yeti on wheels. On ice chest, <laughs> right. I'm carrying all the bags, uh, you know, and Renee just pushing the with her pinkies out. Just and that's, I bet she, yes, that's exactly how she I. She probably didn't even do it. I bet Eric did it. all my stuff. I bet Eric did it all. No. Um, I'm really proud of you. Anyway, but yeah, but it was it was so great to like hear people. Was there any discussion about another one for you? 
Well, you know what? Someone actually, the they noticed that someone commented on some of the promo stuff leading up to it saying, hey, are you going to be in Houston? Um, so they the Houston show just happened. It was earlier this month. But maybe next year I'll do the Houston show. That would be a blessing. Yeah. That would be awesome. And nothing would make me happier than for you to go on the road and me to stay home. Let's get this money, girl. Well, I know people were really sweet on social media and they said, you know, we don't live in San Antonio. We don't live in Texas. We can't see these ideas. Are you going to, are they filmed somewhere? Can we do them? So I'm going to try and recreate some of them on my social media and, and share those videos so everyone can see. Well, I couldn't be proud of that. And I'm really excited for you. Um, I know that Rick had a couple of questions for us. I'm, I'm a little leery because um, Rick tends to have some um, <coughs> pretty deep thoughts. Uh, what you got, Rick? This is certainly not deep, but it is was inspired oh, by you. Um, all right, so question number one is, what's the price limit on a purchase where you feel like you have to talk oh, to Oh, we've actually other? had this discussion amongst ourselves. Yes. Um, well, I it, will, it's definitely changed over time. <laughs> yes, I will tell you a story. Well, Renee never has to ask me. I, I She does what she wants. But <laughs> I will tell you a story that was probably five or six years ago, maybe. Um, I was doing Salt Lake City, and I have a friend that lives in Park City. So he invites me over. I wanted to see Park City, which, by the way, it is stunning. Yeah. Park City, Utah is stunning. And it's got this really interesting vibe. It yeah. has this really <clears throat> old western town feel but it's very artsy fartsy and very fancy at the same time. Yeah. So it's a very interesting vibe. I walk into one of these fancy schmancy art galleries and I see this piece of art that is the size of this wall, right? It's huge, but it's really fucking cool. And I'm like, I'm buying that. I make a little bit of money. Not only am I buying it, I'm not asking Renee. <laughs> I'm fucking buying it. It's super cool. I would like to support artists. I want it. So the lady comes over and she's like, oh, you're looking at this piece? And I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm very serious about that piece, you know? I go, uh, how much? She was $140,000. i am like, yeah, I'm not buying that. <laughs> I thought I was doing well. I'm not. Um, but in my head, I had a price for that piece that I was like, I don't have to ask Renee to do it. I, I like it. It's beautiful. I think she'll like it. It's something I really want. I never do that, ever. Um, Adrian, can, can you help me with some water, please? Um, and I'm like, um, I'm going to do it. And then I, I didn't because it was way, 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 way out of where my head was on um, – how much I could spend, but I think in general, the day to day stuff, we don't ask each other. Yeah. Um, on, on my part, my gambling, we don't talk about because I do limit that. <laughs> um, because when we went to the bank and set up our bank account, they said, what is your daily withdrawal limit? And Steve said it. And I said, okay, I told the, the banker in the room, I said, all yes. right, gentlemen, Thank we heard that know. amount. I know what it is. Um, <laughs> yes. But the day-to-day -day stuff and, and Renee's pretty little <laughs> things and Renee's Renee is very frugal. She spends, a, she spends a lot of money, but, but she's, <laughs> she's always very aware of what she's, buying it's like a pet peeve of mine to overpay for something i am the person who will like stock it on the internet and wait till it goes on sale because yeah, so, the thought of overpaying for but something any is like a, any pet big peeve. purchases we always have a, a discussion um but Brene and i have we we literally talk about everything like we just do we just we're always talking to each other we're always talking about you know what we want to do in the future where our money's going to go where we would like to invest, you know, we're always having that conversation. And um, not even just about finances, about like, well, if we're doing this now, things around the house, like what is the plan? Or if we take this step, how does that affect what we want to happen over here in this other area of our life? Like and, we map it out. And I do got to say that, you know, forever, 
forever, Renee, Renee's always been very stylish. And forever, Renee, lo- she loves jewelry. And forever, Renee always wore cheapy um, costume jewelry. Always. As a matter of fact, I would have to have sessions where I was gluing back or fixing her costume My jewelry. jewelry. <laughs> she'd bring shit to me and she'd be like, fix that. And I'd be there like a little jeweler, you know, putting back together some cheapy necklace that she loved. Um, so recently, you know, because in my opinion, Renee has been so humble <clears throat> in that world and has never asked for expensive jewelry. Recently, I've been telling her like, hey, I, I want to buy you some nice stuff. And recently, Renee said, I would really like some really beautiful hoop earrings. Expensive, nice, beautiful Not expensive, earrings. just real ones. Well, they are wear expensive. them all the time. Yeah. Know. Um, so we walked into Biloxi, Mississippi um, to do the um, Beau, Beau Rivage. Rivage. The casino had a jewelry store. And they had a beautiful jewelry store. And Renee was like, can I get those hoop earrings? And I said, yes, absolutely. And very sweetly, Renee goes, um, did you see the price? And I go, I don't care. I don't care because for so many years, Renee has always been so modest and so humble that I was like, you deserve it. You've been my wife. You've been patient. We've been through this journey together. When we were poor, Renee never complained about being poor. When we had to make sacrifices, Renee never complained about those sacrifices. She'd be, she'd whine a little, but but in, at the end, she made those sacrifices with me, and I just felt like, hey man, we work hard, you deserve it. So I don't know if that answers your question, Rick. You're gonna make me cry. I'm trying not to cry. I'm trying not to be a big old baby, but that was really really sweet. Well, no, but it's true, you know, and and I think Renee treats me that way too, um, when it comes to I like, think. well. <laughs> You know, my I'm a Chevy guy. My my dream car is a 57 Chevy. And one came available. And it's very rare that 57 Chevys come available. And Renee goes, baby, get it. Like yeah. you have you've you've dreamt about that car, you've wanted it, get it. So we did. So just remember that when I won't let that you let you have your big TV. <laughs> <laughs> you brought that shit up, not me. I know. People really did not agree with me in the comments. I'm on telling that you. <laughs> Um, uh, Rick, go ahead. So, so to, to that though, what, why this was like reminded me of you guys is, so I have about 40 people coming over for the premiere of, of your special. And I was like, you know, I'm going to buy the the same margarita machine that Steve and Renee have. And I was like, is that something I need to run (laughs) by Gigi? Well, no, you have to run by Gigi where it lives. Yeah. Cause that thing takes up a good footprint. I mean, we're lucky that. Yeah, you haven't been to the you haven't been to the house since we we put the pool in. So we had the perfect. Dude, it, I will tell you that it is a huge hit. People love it. You know, um, hopefully you guys come to our Easter party. P- this year, I'm doing I'm doing no kids frozen drinks. Yeah, because the kids just sloshed it up. Every but day listen to this. Of it. I'm gonna do a Rebecca Creek and Coke slushy in one, Ooh. and then do a margarita in the other. Yes. I like that idea. So what did you come up with? Did you have to ask Gigi? I did because I didn't, I, it, 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 out of caution, I was just like, yeah, let me just tell her I'm doing this. But let me ask you, so the, the follow-up to this is, what's the price that you would get mad at? Because that, you know, that thing was like, yeah, it's not, not cheap. So if she saw that and I didn't bring it up, I think she may be like, really? Uh, yeah, you know what? It's, it is, it, it's, I don't know. The problem is that, the margarita machine is, do you have to have it? That's the problem, right? Yes. It's like, do you? Yes. After, do you, after, I have a, I have a, Gigi and I have a whole keeping up with the uh, Trevino's <laughs> thing going on. I mean, so. Yeah, you know what it is? The margarita machine is just a bitch to clean. Like you, you don't love it, it. You love it when you have it. And when you're using it at the party in that moment, and then you're like, okay, can I just keep this thing running for like until the next time I have a party again? Well, so, so I don't our, have to clean it. The reason that it that it resonated with us is because our friend Jeff, um, who is our old neighbor, he has uh, like a industrial, like from a restaurant margarita machine, like the big, big one. And anytime any of our friends have a party, he hauls it over. 
He, and it's a huge hit. Like people just love it. Well, I thought to myself, man, I like, I don't want to ask. I don't want to have to ask Jeff every time. Yeah. Hey, can you haul your, it's a thing. I mean, it's like it's heavy. It's two big. dudes bring it over. Then he's got to pick it up. I mean, it's a thing, yeah. right? So that's why I did it because, you know, we entertain so much and it truly is a huge hit. I mean, people, I mean, we go through it. I mean, if I make them, I turn around and I'm like, oh crap, I better make some more because people just, especially, well, especially in the summer when it's so hot or you're by the pool and you just want something cold and refreshing to drink. That's it, it, when it's, it really... it's really nice to, to have it. But yes, you know, when I bought it and I walked it in the house, Renee was like, what the fuck? How much was that thing? And I'm like, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You know, um, but it is also one of those things when people come over, they're like, these motherfuckers have a margarita machine. <laughs> like, you know, but I, but I will say that, you know, we've had it now for three years and we do use it. Yeah. And it is a big hit and people like it. So someone needs to make like a pretty looking margarita machine. Oh, fuck. You know, no, like, you know, you have a Blackstone and it looks so nice and it's like integrated into your outdoor kitchen. Like someone needs to make like a pretty well, integrated margarita machine. Well, you, I mean, you can do a built kitchen. in, right? You know, yeah. <clears throat> so what was the prognosis? What did what did Gigi say about it? Well, it's funny that you mentioned that because I'm getting texts now because evidently I've talked <laughs> a lot about it. So thanks for that, guys. Uh, no, she, she's fine with it overall. It was just more of a question of like, you know, at what point would I just go on my own and buy? No, it? I mean, it's definitely, uh, a, 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 I mean, the, I mean, Renee and I, like I said, Renee and I, and I think you and Gigi are, are very similar. We're always talking, right? We're always, and, and Renee, Renee is the shitter of ideas. Um, and she will shit on ideas, but sometimes I got to say that bad I, ones I shit on bad. ideas. Sometimes not all the time. I do need her to be the voice of reason, uh, you know, of her. And, you know, for Easter, we also rent bouncy houses. We've even been like, well, do we just buy one? Yeah. You know, because, you know, we rented a cotton candy machine. We're like, we looked it up. We're like, fuck, every time we run a cotton candy machine, it's how much? And they cost how much? Fuck that. We're just buying one. Yeah. You know, so because we entertain so much, you have to look at the the the, the value. cost per use. Yeah, cost per like use. Clothes, cost per Is wear. it going to save me money to not have to rent it, to not have to get somebody out here yeah. to, to run, you know. So uh, I'm, I hope you don't get in trouble, Rick, and I hope you enjoy it. I will I will send you um, the guy. Or does he deliver the margarita mix? No, we found we actually found a place that... that um, you can order them online, that but it's like a good mix, and they have a lot of options. Yep, and you can do the strawberry. The, it's like I will, the jug I, of the I'm going to warn you, don't do strawberry. We learned our lesson. Red shit is everywhere. Yeah, after <laughs> after that, I was like, okay, what flavors taste good but don't have a lot of color? Oh. Lemonade, pina colada, yep. the regular margarita, Coke. pineapple. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, dude, it was like, you know, I always tell the story. When I bartended um, at El Chico Restaurant in Corpus Christi, Texas, I had come in super, super drunk, and I had to load the margarita machine in the morning um, or in the afternoon for the for my shift at night. And uh, it takes a few hours, so I'm like, you know, and it was a huge machine because it was a Mexican restaurant. Yeah. So, I mean, you had to get these five-gallon buckets, pour the tequila in. I mean, it was a whole thing. And, uh, man, I was hungover, got to work. I'm like, shit, I got to make these margaritas. Well, it's now rush out. It's rush time, dinner time on a Saturday. And the manager's like, did you make the margaritas? When did you put them in? And I go, I'm not supposed to. I got here at four, put them in. And he's like, they're not freezing. I had put vodka bottles instead of tequila. Oh, no. I, like, I literally wasted like nine bottles of vodka. And I'm like, I, uh, we don't have margaritas. Sorry, guys. We fucking fucked up. Uh, but it was super funny. Then second question, Rick. That was it. I, it was a follow-up of what would get mad at because I, I need to brace myself in case <laughs> you see how much this costs. Well, you know, and the funny part is back in the day, I don't think my dad had to ask any questions ever about the things that he bought or did. 
Oh, I don't know. I don't know if that, well, maybe that's why your dad ended up divorced. There you go. Well, but, but he's been married <laughs> and, and he's hanging on. He's hanging on, you know. Um, I, I was going to bring up, um, um, I don't want to bring that up because it's a whole thing. But um, we did have a comment. We have had, we're, we're so excited. You know, this was a great podcast and partially because, you know, I'm anxious. I'm, I'm really anticipating and, and hoping that this special does well. I think it's going to be so well received, Steve. I hope Rick tells everybody at his watch party to let it run on their phones. <laughs> So I actually, I printed out things, uh, hey, tomorrow at 11, go on and watch it again. So everyone's going to leave. <laughs> what to do? Yes. What to do. I'm not I leaving it up to chance. Yes. Um, it's exciting. I'm excited. I mean, what is... Has, I want everyone to go hit remind me because Netflix, let Netflix know. If people are hitting that button, they know. What is Gigi's thoughts on the special? Well, first of all, she's watched it every edit, every time we did color correction, sound. So she's probably watched it a hundred times. And it's funny that you still laugh at the same parts. And, oh, oh, something I did want to ask you. Numbers in comedy. You say a number in, in this. How many times do you audition a number to get a laugh? What do you mean audition a number? And do you, so, so I don't want to totally give the joke away, but you say you're, maybe I can just believe this out, you're dying this many oh. times a night and the number that you say is funny. So did you have different numbers? Now here's what's you crazy. Different numbers? Every single word in that special, I, I, I try 50 different words to find the right one. And it's funny you say that that's the drinking game for simple man. Every time you hear me say a number drink, are there a lot of numbers? Oh my gosh. Dude, I, I remember like looking back at it, I'm like, uh -huh. Oh my God. I say a number. Like 50 times. Like huh. throughout the special. Yeah. I say a different number. Use numbers a lot. Oh my, I'm like, how many freaking numbers? But yes, Rick, I, <clears throat> I I definitely try. And and this is how technical I am when it comes to comedy. I try to find the funny number. Yeah. I, I think I even threw a half in there, didn't I? You did, and that's why I laugh every time. Yeah. It's the half, right? So you, I, I even try. I tried sixty-eight. I tried forty-five. I try. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's so. And then because I noticed that we say so that I say so many numbers, I'm like, oh, now I have to look at it as a whole and go. I don't want to repeat numbers. Yeah. But yeah. I literally say numbers, and I know Rick's racking his brain over it. Yeah, go through the list, and I know you list. are too. Yeah. But I probably say. Seven to ten different numbers. When did you catch that? Just me looking at the set and my brain and looking yeah. back at it and performing it and going, well, there's a number. There's a number. There's a number. That's the drinking game. Every time I say it, every time I say a number, take a shot. <laughs> uh, Isn't that crazy? You, um, that made me think of, too. So Rick is editing the trailer right now. And there's a joke in the trailer. And I, when I played it for Brian, Brian was like, oh, Steve wanted to cut that. And I convinced him to keep it. Um, and, you know, because it's hard. Like, Rick, the trailer looks amazing. The trailer that Rick has put together is awesome. And I can't wait for people to see that. But it's condensing what you do, especially in your, like, longer form stories in an hour. And getting that down to 30 seconds or under a minute for it's the hard. purposes of a trailer is so stinking hard. Um, and so the fact that Rick found those like little nuggets to piece this amazing trailer together is really freaking cool too. Well, and that's the other thing going back to the, the comedian conversation, you know, I get literally hundreds of calls from comedian friends asking for work and I try to accommodate. Right. <clears throat> um, there's a lot of guys I take on the road or they'll ask me and I'm like, Oh yeah, yeah. Like come, come perform or whatever. Um, and I can't tell you how many comedians reach out and go, Hey, can you give me a plug? Can you help me out? Can you, can you let people know that my album's out? Can you let, you know, and I try to accommodate. Yeah. It is amazing how, when I put out, Hey, here's the deadline article. Here is the, the clip that Netflix is playing. All of a sudden those comedians, are nowhere to be found when I need the help. Yeah. 
you know. Yeah, and it, and yeah, it, no, I've seen, I mean, I'm agreeing with you on this one because I have seen that and not just, I mean, we've just announced this special, but I saw that through the process with some of your other stuff too, yeah. And, and, it's, and it's heartbreaking because I'm like, guys, I gave you work. You asked for work, I gave it to you. Yeah. Right. You wanted me to support you. I supported you. I, you know. Yeah. And and I'm all about it. And I don't do things expecting things sure. in return. Sure. Sure. But there's the rule of but, like, it, um, give twice before you ask. Right. You know. I mean, there's one comedian that that you know, gosh, he was he was calling me for advice and favors and you know, can you help me do this and can you help me do that and how do you do this and how do you do that? I gave him all that information. He blew up. And he turned me down to be on his podcast. You know, I wanted to promote my podcast on his podcast because it has become one of the most successful podcasts out there mm -hmm. for comedians. Well, several years ago, he was calling me up going, please walk me through this. Tell me what to do. How do you do it on socials? You know, Steve, I mean, literally calling me several times yeah. asking me, you're having success with social media. Can you? And I, I spent hours on the phone laying it out for them. Here we are. I'm asking to be on their podcast. Yeah. I get the no. You know, you're just like, really? There's one comedian that I loaned $1,000 to, never got paid back. That person went on to be huge months later. Yeah. I reached out to that person. Hey, me and Renee would love to have you on our podcast. No response and a no. And I'm like, I loaned you $1,000 when I didn't have it. Yeah. To help you out, you then went on to become a superstar. I'm asking you to be on my podcast, and it's a no. Yeah, that's the kind of stuff we just go, really? Oh, I think you, you know? just got to keep putting good out into the universe. That's what I keep doing. Yeah. You know, I just yeah. keep doing it. Uh, we love you guys. We really appreciate everybody for the continued love and support, but we really need you guys. Really, really need you guys. Here is how you can help. You want to help? We want you to help. Here's how you can help. Share the content. Tag people in the content. Go to Netflix. Click that reminder button. Watch the special because clicks are what they're looking for. Yeah. They know if you've just watched the first two minutes. They know if you keep watching after that. Like the, the analytics and the data that they get. So, so you got to click. you got to watch on all the screens. Do me a favor. Watch it once. We all have extra tablets. Let it run on another tablet. Just let it run. You have no idea that your one person can give us those two clicks, three clicks, four clicks. Yeah. Those are the ways you can help us. We'd really appreciate it if you guys could help us. My wife and I absolutely love you. We are doing this together. We thank you so very much. Please follow Renee. I am Renee with an A on Instagram. She's going to be a superstar. And she'll never talk to us again. <laughs> we love you guys. See you later.